What the camera doesn't show is how bad it smells. Welcome back to our urban farm plot. We're really excited to be working in the garden this evening. And tonight we're going to be showing you how we do our foiler feeder with fish emulsion. There are many different products on the market, but we've come to really like Brown's liquid fertilizer in particular, as it is certified organic, and it offers a 231 fertilizer. So it's inexpensive, easy to find. You can find this at some of your local garden stores, but if you need any volume, we suggest going to Seven Spring Farms, as you can buy it in a five gallon bucket or even a 55 gallon drum. So we love to use foliar fertilizer in particular to just give plants a boost for both nutritional and increase their photosynthetic ability for a short duration of time. We like these sprayers, they're lightweight, easy to purchase, you can find them at just about any hardware store. And it has a adjustable end here, that way you can adjust it from a stream to a mist. Usually with a product like fish emulsion, you want it to be pretty fine, that way you get great coverage on the leaves. Before adding to the sprayer, I like just to mix it up a little bit, making sure the content is well mixed. And then just to try to help prevent any type of uh, sediment from going through the system, just pour it through a filter. We found this on Amazon, it's like for $4, and we'll link it in the show notes below. For the quantity, we're going to be doing this as a one gallon sprayer. It's about three glugs worth. It's very scientific. Glug, glug, glug. So here you can see some of the particles that were in the solution itself. This is just some of the solids that ended, end up solidifying as time goes on. If this ended up going through the sprayer, it would end up clogging the nozzle. Most of these sprayers, you can unclog it, but the less of that you have to do, the easier and more pleasurable the experience will be. And we're ready to go. With fish emulsion, the nice thing about it is you can spray it on just about anything. It has a low enough NPK where most crops will greatly benefit from it. So we'll do everything from our elderberries to our onions. Sweet corn will really enjoy it, as well as the tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, and anything else you have planted. And before you get started, it's good to just dial in your sprayer. As you can see, that's a pretty strong spray, but if you get it just a little bit finer, it coats the leaves much more evenly. And that's what we're going for is a nice even coating of the leaf as the leaf surface is actually what's absorbing the nutrients. It's quite spectacular, but leaves have the capacity in the stomata to open up and receive the nutrition that we're putting on the leaves. One thing to note is you will not want to do this when temperatures are above 80 to 85 degrees as it does cover the leaf with a liquid, which can have the effect of causing burning at times. When you're spraying, you just want to try to get the leaf surface pretty well all the way around. So sometimes a circular pattern on a really large crop like this can help with that. Once you get that done, you're ready to move on. We are thankful that we don't deal with deer pressure here, but we have heard that spraying on regular intervals can help to deter them as they do not like the smell or flavor of fish. What the camera doesn't show is how bad it smells. It smells like what you would expect fish poop to smell like. Well, that's pretty well it for spraying with fish emulsion. It's super easy. And you can do this about once every week. 
or on a bi-weekly basis, whatever you want. But what we've found is it's really nice just to build this into your rhythm as it provides an opportunity just to walk the garden and observe. And just have an eye out just in case you have any pest damage or you might have nutritional deficiencies. When you're done with the fish emulsion, it is important to rinse out the container and flush some clean water through it. That way you don't have any sediment or bacteria that potentially might feed on those organisms. If you have any extra that you didn't use for the foiler feed, feel free to pour that on some of your perennial crops. We'll do it here on our elderberry, as the roots also absorb a lot of that nutrition as well. 